today we are going to talk about upper limb fractures, understanding anatomy, types and management. So mostly my clients were with this topic, so I have to choose this topic for lecture. I'm Dr. Huma Ibrar, physical therapist and international license exam consultant. And today I'm going to explore about upper limb fractures. Amazing! Let's talk about the introduction of this lecture. Upper limb fractures are common injuries encountered in clinical practice. These fractures can affect any bone from shoulder to the fingers. Understanding mechanisms, types and management is essential for effective rehabilitation. So shoulder and proximal upper limb fractures. Talking about the clavicle fractures caused by falls or direct trauma treated with sling or ORIF, open reduction and internal fixation. Coming towards the scapular fractures that are the most rare caused by high energy trauma and mostly conservative treatment. Talking about the proximal humerus fracture common in older adults treated with sling or ORIF and talking about the distal humerus fractures that are most common in children. Now let's talk about clavicle fractures in detail. Clavicle or the collarbone fractures are categorized based on their location and fracture pattern. The main types include number one medial third or proximal fracture. Located near the sternum, sternoclavicular joint, relatively rare 5% of clavicle fractures can involve displacement or associated injuries to nearby structures. Number two, middle third fractures that are the most common type of clavicle fractures. Approximately 80% of the clavicle fractures are of middle third fracture of clavicle occurs in the mid shaft where the bone is thinnest often result in displacement due to the pull of muscles like sternocleidomastoid muscle. Number three, lateral third are the distal fractures. Near the shoulder, acromioclavicular joint accounts for 15% of clavicular fractures. Talking about the humerus fractures, mid shaft humerus fractures are caused by direct trauma, may cause radial nerve palsy, treated with bracing or open reduction and internal fixation. Coming towards the distal humerus fractures that are common in children treated with cast or ORIF and proximal humerus fracture that are common in older people due to OA or falls. Now let's move towards details. Proximal humerus fractures that are near the shoulder Types includes number one, fracture of the anatomical neck, number two, fracture of the surgical neck, that is the most common side, third, greater tuberosity fracture, fourth, lesser tuberosity fracture. Coming towards the shaft of the humerus fractures, fractures, midsection of the bone that are from midsection of the bone, often caused by the direct trauma or twisting injuries, associated with radial nerve injury, wrist drop. Patterns include transverse, oblique, spiral, and comminuted fractures. Number three, distal humerus fractures that are near the elbow joint. Types include supracondylar fracture that is the most common in children, intercondylar fracture, medial or lateral condyle fractures, and epicondyle fractures. So these are the four types of uh, fractures of distal humerus. Types of humerus fractures also include pathological, stress fractures and cream stick fractures. Now what are the pathological fractures? These occur due to weakened bones from disease like cancer or osteoporosis. Now how the stress fractures occur? Rare in humerus but can occur in athletes or soldiers. Green stick fracture, common in children where the bone bends and partially breaks. Moving towards the elbow fractures, olecranon fracture, fall on the flexed elbow treated with tension band wiring or ORIF, radial head and neck fracture, 
caused by falls treated conservatively are with ORIF, coronoid process fractures associated with elbow dislocation. Treatment depends on severity. Coming towards the forearm fractures, radius and ulna shaft fractures, direct trauma, typically treated with ORIF. Montagia fracture, ulna shaft fracture with radial head dislocation, treated with ORIF. Galeazi fracture, radius shaft fracture with DRUG dislocation, that is distal radio ulnar joint dislocation, treated with ORIF, that is open reduction and internal fixation. Coming towards the wrist fractures, distal radius fractures includes Coley's fracture and Smith fractures. I hope you all will be familiar with Coley's and Smith fracture that are treated with cast or ORIF. So, the Smith fracture and Coley's differentiation mechanism of injury of Smith fracture includes impact on flexed wrist, force and dorsal aspect of wrist. While Coley's fracture include force on volar aspect of wrist. Scaphoid fractures caused by falls, risk of avascular necrosis and treated with cast or surgical fixation. Talking about hand fractures, metacarpal fractures includes boxers or panic fractures treated with splinting or surgery. Now, what is the difference between panic fracture and Rolando fracture? I want you to all answer me in comment section. And I'm pretty sure that my clients have already the excellent knowledge and have ex can excellently differentiate between a Panitz and Rolando's fracture. So let's see now. Phalangeal fractures common in sport injuries treated with body taping are surgery. Now what are the role of physiotherapy in these fractures? In acute phase, pain management and maintaining mobility in unaffected areas. Rehabilitation phase include gradual strengthening and range of motion exercises, return to activity, proprioceptive training, and functional restoration. Conclusion: Upper limb fractures require a multidisciplinary approach for effective management. Physiotherapists play a vital role in rehabilitation and restoring function. Understanding classification, mechanism, and management is crucial for success. Thank you for watching this video. Thank <laughs> you.